Good uh, morning. Nice to be here. Before I start, uh, let me say that uh, I have been a little remiss in answering your questions, but please continue to send them to uh, info at jio.com, I-N-F-O at jio.com. And I'll do my best to answer uh, your questions in the order that they are received. But today I thought I'd talk to you about uh, something that's become very, um, very much a topic of discussion in many circles, but particularly in the physics uh, community. And this is the idea of entanglement. So I'll first uh, speak about quantum entanglement but then I'll talk about what I think is the real significance of uh, what entanglement is, because you and I are entangled beings in an entangled universe. Okay, so quantum entanglement, uh, the, the whole story of quantum entanglement started with a paper published in, I think, 19... 80, uh, 19, uh, sorry, 1935. And uh, that paper was um, uh, referred to as the Einstein Podolsky Rosen paradox or the Einstein Podolsky Rosen equation. A mathematical construct that said if two particles um, uh, are entangled, which means they have been together before, uh, then wherever they go, they remain uh, in instant uh, correlation. So that when you measure the state of one, the spin of one, you automatically determine the state of the other uh, instantly. So these two particles, maybe at different ends of the universe, they're kind of dancing together. Okay, um, so Joe, one particle, Mary, the other particle, they dance together wherever they are, uh, any part of the universe. And so that's also called non-local correlation or quantum entanglement. But uh, initially it was thought to be a mathematical anomaly and then, you know, John Bell kind of suggested another mathematical version of it and then um, much later in 1980 there was a scientist there is a scientist called Alain Aspect who um, actually proved it at CERN and then uh, much later 1998 another scientist called Jizen showed that actually it works that particles that are entangled re remain in instant correlation no matter where they are in the universe. Billions of miles away, they still remain correlated. And because uh, distance in space is also distance in time, this actually does suggest that uh, uh, there is entanglement not only in space, but also in time. Past, future, future and present are correlated. So that was the idea and now uh, science is moving in a direction where it is suggested that space-time energy information matter, uh, force fields, gluons, particles, they're all entangled. So at the fundamental level of existence, space-time energy information matter all coexist as possibilities that will forever remain uh, correlated with each other. So um, this is essentially the physics, uh, metaphorically speaking, without the equations of quantum entanglement. Everything is correlated with everything else. That's what it's suggesting anyway. Everything is correlated with everything else. So um, that includes past, present, and future. It includes distance in space and time. Uh, Larry Dossie says that this correlation is instantaneous. 
it's unmitigated, which means the robustness of the correlation doesn't diminish with distance in space-time. It's unmitigated and it's unmediated. There's no, uh, there's no signal. It's signal-less correlation. Okay, so that's, you know, using physics as the metaphor. But uh, now um, let's go a little deeper. Our minds are entangled. Right now, my mind is speaking to your mind, and I'm actually seeing on the screen your um, responses, both uh, agreeing and disagreeing, but our minds are entangled at the moment. Uh, my friend uh, Dr. Dan Siegel says that the mind is an embodied, which means it's in the brain and the body, um, an embodied and relational process that regulates the flow of energy and information in uh, what is basically an ecosystem of uh, biology. So right now my mind is entangled with yours, yours is entangled with mine, and but also our brains are entangled because what's whatever is happening in the mind is being represented in the brain. But since our brains are connected to our bodies, then our bodies are entangled. This doesn't seem obvious, but at the deeper level, we are members of the same mind and members of the same body. And even though our bodies look different and find ourselves in different locations in space and time, at the deepest level of existence, <clears throat> we're all part of a unified wholeness, mind, brain, body, environment, ecosystems, stars, galaxies, force fields, gravity, gluons, quarks, particles, energy, information, are part of the wholeness of existence that we call the total universe. And so right now, my mind is entangled with yours, yours with mine, our brains are entangled, our bodies are entangled, our uh, thoughts are entangled, and um, you trace them back to the source, you end up with a singularity, which is the source of all entanglement. So why does our perceptual experience actually show uh, separation in space and time? Because it's very obvious that uh, some of you are in South Africa, a human construct. Uh, I am in New York, another human construct. I have a different body than yours, another human construct. My mind is conditioned in a different way than yours because of the um, context and relationships of our life and all of um, all of the um, experiences we've had since we were born. So when you we were born, you were just a bundle of consciousness with what humans call a mind, a brain, a body, and enjoying uh, yourself in a chaos of colors and fragrances and textures and sounds and uh, forms and sensations and then of course uh, your mind started to get conditioned your brain was created by your genes but now it started to get conditioned by your experiences so the brain is uh, created by genes but it's sculpted by experience and uh, i actually feel that the brain is just the objective correlate of the conditioned mind so we all have different minds because of our conditioning and the neural networks are different uh, in all of us based on our conditioning and how we have interpreted our experiences over a lifetime. But um, therefore innumerable minds, innumerable brains, both species and culture specific, but all uh, basically uh, uh, in the same awareness. So awareness is not personal. Uh, awareness is not personal. Awareness is the fundamental ground of all experience. My experience, your experience, the experience of insects and birds and alligators and dolphins and tigers and lions and every other species. These are all consciousness having 
a different experience, a human experience, a caterpillar experience, a butterfly experience, a bat experience, uh, a statue experience, um, a hand experience, a uh, watch experience. These are all experiences and as experiences they are modified forms of consciousness. And the consciousness therefore differentiates into innumerable knowers, innumerable modes of knowing, innumerable things known, innumerable observers, innumerable observations or modes of observation, innumerable objects experienced, but the objects are actually nothing other than modifications of consciousness as sensations, images, feelings, thoughts. So your direct experience of anything, doesn't matter what it is, your direct experience is either a sensation or a perception or a thought. By sensation, I mean any sensation, internal sensations, this sensation, that sensation, and then the interpretation of that is thought, and then, you know, when it is attached to a like or a dislike, it becomes an emotion, because an emotion is nothing but a thought entangled with a sensation. So, where do we go? Not only is energy and information entangled, but sensations, images, feelings and thoughts are also entangled. Because, you know, if I change uh, sensation um, or, or experience sound, that experience, that perceptual experience is entangled with how I feel and what I think, how I interpret that experience. You change a sensation, you change an image, you change a thought, you change a feeling, you change a perception and you change all of it. And because we are entangled with each other, then at some level we are, um, uh, uh, what should I say, a, a, a impermanent uh, manifestation of the entanglement of all existence. For your body right now to be um, sustained, um, it needs all the electromagnetic forces, force fields that hold the atoms in your body together, but those electromagnetic forces are part of the electromagnetic field of the whole universe. And so uh, um, your body is held together by force fields, but also by gravity, because otherwise you'd fly off in, into the atmosphere, um, but you don't. You're held together by electromagnetic fields, and it is important that uh, there should be gravity so you can walk on the ground and um, you can experience this wonderful life. Um, in other words, your body is the entanglement of force fields, uh, gluons, subatomic particles, gravity, and uh, the whole universe. Your body is entangled with the whole universe and in fact it's not separate. We call it a separate entity unto itself because we think, uh, as um, Michael Sharma reminded me, we think there's a homunculus inside somewhere here, a little being, a little Deepak looking at the world out through these, uh, um, you know, eyes and some from somewhere here, but there's no one in there. In fact, this body is an experience in awareness. This mind is an experience in awareness. This brain is an objective correlate of the conditioned mind, which is a conditioning of awareness. Ultimately, there's only awareness, and that awareness is the fundamental ground of all experience that differentiates into innumerable observers, modes of observation, and objects observed, but we can also say that uh, those experiences are then given constructs by human beings, and those uh, constructs include everything that we call gravity, force fields, and the total universe. So at the most fundamental level then, that quantum entanglement also means no separation. No separation. One being many expressions. Just like when you were conceived, you were one stem cell, pluripotential stem cells, that uh, differentiated into eyes, into nose, into lips, into teeth, into hands, into gonads, into brain, etc. And right now your body, all your organs are entangled with each other. Whatever happens in your stomach affects what happens in your heart, what affects 
happens in your heart affects what happens in your brain, uh, which affects what happens in your endocrine system, and that affects your immune system, etc., etc. So you see, reality is entangled. Let's forget the word quantum, but we are entangled beings in an entangled universe. What's the deepest meaning of this? The deepest meaning of this is love. Love is not a mere sentiment. Love is the ultimate truth at the heart of creation. And that is that we are the same being in different disguises. This is timeless love. And this expresses itself, of course, as emotions such as compassion, empathy, joy, equanimity, peace. And ultimately, as you understand, that at the source, that which is called awareness, that differentiates into different uh, forms and phenomena, um, that is timeless, not in space-time. Even space-time energy, information and matter are emergent from this fundamental level of being or existence. So being, existence, awareness are the same thing and their, um, their realization in your own self is called self-realization and self-realization is ultimately uh, also called enlightenment. Okay, so that was uh, my little spiel on entangled beings. Now of course many people are asking what does this say? Uh, this shirt say and the camera is uh, switched uh, in uh, direction so you have to actually it's not uh, right side up or right side it's backwards uh, but what it says is qualia camp and then it says dooby dooby doo uh, the Frank Sinatra song I'm sure you've heard dooby dooby doo qualia qualia is different than quanta quanta is units of measurement and uh, units of, uh, you know, the smallest indivisible unit in which waves of energy are emitted or absorbed, like photons, electrons, but qualia are qualities of awareness, sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. And just like quanta are entangled, so are qualia, experiences, entangled. And we move from being to doing, and that's the dance of life, dooby dooby doo. So there you are, I've answered your questions and uh, thank you for joining me today. And uh, stay entangled because when you feel you're not entangled, then you will have fear and fear will cause a lot of suffering. It's all the cause of all the wars and terrorism and eco-destruction and everything else that we're seeing is because of lack of understanding of the inseparability of our existence. As the great Thich Nhat Hanh, the great Buddhist monk from Vietnam says, we are inter-beings that inter-arise in the inter isness, And that's all there is, the inter isness, which we call entangled being. Thank you. Lots of love and stay in touch. Even if you don't, we will be entangled. My happiness depends on your happiness and my joy depends on your joy and vice versa. So may all beings be peaceful, may all beings be happy, may all beings be joyful. That's the Buddhist prayer and uh, it is based on this deep, deep understanding that there are no parts to the universe. There are no parts. Parts are just fictions. Uh, what we call parts are patterns of behavior of the whole, impermanent patterns of behavior of the whole. And the whole is one being in love. That kind of love does not uh, focus on anyone or denies anyone the experience of love, not necessarily focused on anyone and not denied to anyone, like light radiating from a bonfire. 
that is who we are, the light of awareness radiating as love. Thank you.